All right, everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome to today's video. And welcome to my new video series, Beginning with Bamboo, where I'll be your guide through this exciting journey of 3D printing with bamboo printers. Whether you're a seasoned 3D maker or an absolute beginner, I'm here to help you. I'll help you navigate through all of the different challenges and turn your wildest imaginations into reality. In this episode, we'll be going over choosing the right uh, Bamboo Labs printer and the important things to consider when choosing a printer. We'll also go over the different filament types that it supports, as well as the different build plates that you can get with it. I'll also share the guide that I use to help me be successful in all of my 3D prints, which is the Bamboo Wiki. So if all that sounds good, then sit back and relax and I'll get everything ready. And now a word from our sponsor, JustWay. Elevate your projects with JustWay, your one-stop shop for CNC, sheet metal, injection molding, 3D, and urethane casting. Want to integrate more into your creations? With JustWay, it's just as easy as getting a quote, confirming your specs, and getting quality controlled products delivered straight to your house. Visit JustWay.com and make your ideas reality, made just the way you like. All right, so recently Bamboo added one more printer to their lineup. So it gives us a total of three different printers that we need to look at as we're making a decision on which printer that we can buy. And obviously you can see that there's, um, you know, price difference all the way from $600 to $1,200. So almost doubling the price in the X1C or X1 Carbon. So what is the difference between these and what are you getting for the extra money? So without going through every single one of the specs here, I'll go over the ones that are the most important and probably the one um, that will determine which one of these that you need to buy. So I will make that easier. So as we can see right away, um, you know, the P1P does not have an enclosure and that's going to make a difference in some of the things that we can print. And that is going to be the difference really between these three. The P1S has an enclosure. It's a cool color too. I really like that color but let's notice that the shell is plastic and glass. Uh, so in the X1C, it's aluminum and glass. Um, so that's part of the price difference right there is the aluminum versus the plastic there. But that too is also gonna have an effect later on as we can see. <clears throat> so they all have the same build uh, surface, you know, or volume or whatever, and everything like that. Um, the extruder gears are different and are a hardened steel on the X1C. The max build plate temperature is 10 degrees C hotter in the X1C. I would imagine it's because of the aluminum shell versus the plastic shell being able to hold the heat. Um, all of the cooling is the same between the X1C and the P1S. Now, supported filament. This is probably the place where you need to spend the most time selecting which one of these printers that you wanna buy. What type of filament are you gonna print the most? Or what type of filament do you wanna print in the future? So we'll see here that everything is ideal on the X1C. So if you wanna just be able to print everything and anything, um, out of all of these, then the X1C is the one that, that you want to use. Um, and the big reason why it's ideal on this is the enclosure and some of these things have to uh, print at a very high uh, temperature, right? Even on the P1P, you do need an enclosure to print uh, some of this stuff. And it just says capable, but not ideal. Same thing here for PA and PC. In the P1S, it's capable, but not ideal. Carbon fiber, not recommended on any of them except for the uh, X1C. So this is the, the one place that I think as you're making a decision to buy a printer that you need to spend the most time on. The reason why I got the X1C or one of the big reasons why is it prints everything. 
right? So if that's important to you, then that's probably the way that you need to go. If it's not important to you, then I would definitely look at the P1S or the P1P. And honestly, I would really look at the P1S over the P1P. It's a hundred dollar difference in price and you're definitely getting uh, your money's worth on that. Okay, so let's go through a couple more uh, differences here. The Bamboo X1C has the micro LiDAR as well as the neural network processing unit. Okay, the P1S and the P1P do not have the LiDAR, as you can see here, and they do not have the neural network processing unit. I don't know if that's a deal breaker for you, but the, those are differences there and the camera resolution is different between them, okay? So again, my recommendation, spend most of your time looking at these filaments and which ones that you want to uh, print with and what you plan on printing in the future. And this will really help you identify uh, which one of these printers that you want to buy. And that's also a great segue into the next part of the video where let's talk about all of these different filaments. All right, so now that I told you how important filament is um, to making your decision for your printer, let's go over the different types of filament that Bamboo has. Now the printer isn't limited to Bamboo filament, but they do have a pretty good selection and, and a lot of different uh, really cool colors in here. So the first one is PLA, polylactic acid. And this is the most commonly used 3D printing material known for its ease of use and low odor. It's typically used for prototyping, educational and architectural models and other non-intensive applications. And PLA is the one that I print with the most. And as you can see, there's several different colors, uh, different finishes. This is a new one, this gradient finish here and uh, other different uh, you know, types of things that you can do with PLA. Next would be PETG, and that's polyethylene terephthalate glycol modified. Wow, tongue twister there. It is a durable filament with strong layer adhesion. It is used in 3D printing for applications that require more strength, flexibility, and, durab and durability than PLA can offer, like functional parts and mechanical parts. Okay, and you can see that they have several colors here, including translucent. And next on the list is TPU, thermoplastic polyurethane. And this is a flexible, highly resilient uh, material. TPU is used in 3D print objects that need to bend or flex during use, such as phone cases, flexible connectors, or footwear. And TPU is very, very rubbery and very, very um, elastic and can bend and everything like that. Next on the list is PC or polycarbonate. It is known for its high strength, heat resistance, and transparency. PC is used in 3D printing for durable parts that need to resist impact, such as bulletproof glass, eyewear, and electronics enclosures. ABS, or acrylonitro... Wow, yeah, we're not even going to try to say ABS. <clears throat> is a strong and durable filament ideal for creating parts that need to withstand high temperatures. ABS is commonly used in automotive parts, tools, and toys like Lego bricks. Now let's talk about the carbon fiber filaments. And these filament types have PLA, ABS, PETG, PA, PET, as we can see here, mixed with tiny carbon fibers, enhancing the strength, stiffness, and lightness. It is used for parts that need superior mechanical properties, such as drones, as we've seen in some of my videos, robotics, and RC car parts, which we have seen in our viewer pictures as well. So they do have several different versions of the carbon fiber from PAHT, and PA is polyamide, also known as nylon, PA is a strong, flexible, and heat-resistant filament often used in 3D printing for mechanical parts, gears, or components that need to withstand friction and wear. All right, and we also see that there's PET carbon fiber, and PET is polyethylene terephthalate. 
like PETG, PET is a durable and flexible filament used for creating functional parts that need to withstand stress, but it's less commonly used due to the popularity of its glycol modified version or PETG. There's also support materials that you can use that are, help break away a little bit. And then some of the filament types that we haven't discussed, not on the page here, and that would be PVA, polyvinyl alcohol. This filament is often used as a support material because it is water soluble, enabling easy removal of the support structure after printing. So you might've seen that in a couple of different places. ASA, which is acrylics, styrene acrylonitrile or whatever that is sorry i don't speak all of these things <clears throat> that is a uv resistant material similar to abs asa is used for outdoor applications where parts need to resist fading and wear from weather and sunlight and that kind of concludes all of the different filament types that were listed on the page with the differences um, between the different printers um, so as you can see, there's several different applications, um, <clears throat> all the way from, you know, just basic use and prototyping to things that are super flexible, to things that are very stiff, to things that can be outdoors, to things that can resist high heat. So as you're thinking about the projects that you want to do today with your 3D printer, as well as tomorrow, think about the different types of filament types that you might need. Do you need outdoor use? Do you need high strength? Do you need high heat resistance? Is it just the, the colors that you need in there? <clears throat> so make sure as you're making a decision on getting a printer and everything that you're looking at what type of filament that um, you want to use and make sure that the filament that you wanna use is the best one for the application that you're looking at. So I hope this was helpful. Um, but the next thing that you would need to look at as you're making a decision on a printer and then looking at your filament is not every build plate that you have with bamboo works with all of these different filaments. So now that we've learned about all of these different filament types, let's learn about the build plates. All right. So this is the bamboo wiki that I was talking about earlier, and this is the one specific to the filament. And I will leave a link in the description below um, to this page. And I do highly recommend that you bookmark that and definitely have access to it all the time because this is kind of your guide for which plate to use for which one of these materials that you're using and how to make sure that you're setting everything up. So these are all of the build plates that Bamboo has. Now we're not limited to that. Um, you have seen some other videos where I show some alternatives to this, but for this video, we'll be talking about just the build plates that Bamboo has. Um, so there's the cool plate, um, which is on one side. This comes with the X1C and on one side is the cool plate. On the other side is the engineering plate. So you get both of those in one with the X1C. And I believe the P1P comes with the dual sided texture PEI plate. Um, and the other one that is available out there is the high temperature plate. And I do have videos on all of these except for the engineering plate as I don't really use that one that much. Um, but here's the list of materials that you can print on the cool plate and then what's not recommended on the cool plate. So again, as you're looking at what type of materials you're gonna print for the application that you need to print them with, um, it's important to have the right build plate for that. And um, one thing to note here is the high temperature plate also has the engineering plate on one side. It can be used on all of the filament types here. And so can the dual sided uh, textured PEI plate. Um, so if you're looking for things that can do everything from PLA to TPU or even our ABS or, you know, these higher temperature things like PA and everything, right? These two plates can do all of those things. All right. Now this, uh, site here is very, very informative. And again, it's something that I use almost every time that I print to make sure that everything's good to go. 
and everything like that. So now that we've learned about the different build plates and everything, let's learn about this uh, filament wiki here and, and what it can be used for. So at the top of this page, um, it gives the compatibility of the different sizes of nozzles, which we'll go over the nozzles in a different video, as well as the AMS or automatic material system, which we'll go over in a different episode as well. Um, but here you can see which nozzles work with which filament types or what is recommended and if it's compatible with running in the AMS as well. Um, so this is a handy guide to have. It'll give you some recommended nozzle temperatures, um, whether or not the hardened nozzle is required for some of the rougher materials. Um, so this is really good. This is another really good guide to keep in mind um, when to use the glue stick and when you can use liquid glue and on which materials you can use that on. So this is a good guide to know. And then the guide that we just went over on what materials print on which of the build plates. Okay. And then there's also some storage, drying, right? So you've seen some of my videos where we need to dry the filament. This is a good place to have, um, you know, the guide for all of the drying. And then this also gives you some, um, you know, recommendations on the things that you'll be printing, right? Do you need tensile strength, right? So you're going to want to select something that's high in tensile strength. Do you want impact resistance? Well, you probably want to choose something with the higher number of impact resistance, right? Something that's very soft and rubbery, right? Is going to be very impact resistant, but also that PC that's very, very hard will be impact resistant and then heat deflection, uh, temperature level, right? So if you need something, if you're making a part or something like that, that needs to, um, be able to handle a lot of heat, for example, your filament spools and your spool cover for drying, both of those things need to be able to handle high heat or high heat deflection, right? So if you're trying to dry a, a refill filament in one of the spools that you print out, that needs to have high heat deflection, um, as well as, um, you know, the, the spool cover that you put in there. So you can see some of these things are very, very good at deflecting heat. All right. So that sums it up. Hopefully uh, um, this gets you started with selecting a printer and some of the things that are very, very important to think about, like the filament that you're going to be printing and the applications, you know, that you're going to be using uh, for 3D printing. Right. So think about the applications that you're going to be doing now, what you want to do in the future. That'll tell you what type of filament that you're going to need um, to have on hand to accomplish those projects that you have in the future which will in turn help you decide which one of the three printers that you needed. So I hope this was helpful. Smash that like button if it was. Uh, be sure to subscribe for more content. Thank you to all my patrons and I hope everybody has a great week and I'll see you next week. Thank you everybody.